What's up guys? How's it going out there? Hey, uh, just over here at the hangar working on a little project I decided to show you. I don't know if I showed you guys my uh, too much of my buddy's Helio. I think I had a little bit of that on some older videos way back when, but it's a uh, 56 Helio Courier 391B. It's got the O435, the geared 435 with 101 inch prop, and uh, the thing's a monster, and it's terrifying to fly, I'm going to be honest. You know, I'm not the most experienced tailwheel pilot on the planet by a, by a ways. Um, I actually got my uh, endorsement in the 108 here. You guys remember that, but uh, I'll show you a little project I'm working on. So I just built some flat brackets, and uh, I would have uh, showed you what it was like to build those, but it's really pretty straightforward. You drill a couple holes, and uh, I had to sit and run a lot of numbers. That's what took the most time on, on, on changing the ratio here in order to get a little more movement out of my flaps. So what I'm doing is I want my flaps to move a few degrees more total. I don't want them to come down any further. They already come down like 44 degrees. I want to shove them up higher. So when I trimmed all this out, you know, these come up and push against the trim a little bit to kind of seal. Well, I think the trim is holding them down slightly. There's a little bit of slop in that system right at the top. And it's... I think it's hurting me a little bit and holding the flaps down just slightly and hurting my speed a tiny bit from what I'm noticing. So we're going to install these little brackets and test it out. And oh, one thing, let me make a note here. Um, this is important. This is an experimental deal. I'm not recommending other people do this. You're definitely, you know, a little bit of a test pilot. It's experimental. You're stressing the cable system that operates the flaps when you do this. So you need to operate the flaps at a lower speed. And mine, you could pull the flaps on below 80 miles an hour. I already, because I had changed the ratio a little bit, was operating them at like, you know, below 70. Um, now I'll be down to 65 or even lower. You can feel it in the handle. You can tell when you're putting a good load on them. And I just slow down until that load isn't excessive. Whatever that ends up being, 60, 65, no big deal. You know, I think it's worth it for the extra range and the benefits of that to just use them at a little bit lower speed, no big deal. So just wanted to point that out. All right, let's get to it. So I went out, uh, tested the flaps first thing, did some stalls, made some landings, everything was good there. Then I moved on to some emergency procedures. Wanted to do some return to the field, you know, the impossible turn testing. Found out that uh, 550 feet, it's not too big a deal. 500 feet starts to become wind dependent. Below that, it's definitely dependent upon the conditions and probably not worth trying. It can be done, but everything's gotta be just right.
And the other thing is I wanted to test was, you know, shutting down the motor completely and testing the drag difference. You know, with the high compression Rotec, especially with the zipper kit, the big bore, it doesn't um, windmill unless you dive really fast. So, you know, you can uh, get the prop stopped, which is good. A little less drag that way. And it is slightly draggier, of course, than an idling engine that is producing a tiny bit of thrust, but it's not very drastic. The difference is very minimal on this airplane, which is good to know. It's kind of fun to make a few of these landings. I don't know if you guys ever do this, but when you're flying along and you just, you you know, you look over at an area and you think, hey, I wonder if it quit right now, if I could make that, you know, that road or that field right there, or that, that decent spot to land because I'm pretty low. And uh, so I was going around the other day and just doing that, just putting myself in those spots and actually pulling the power back and just seeing if I could make it. And, you know, as well as I know this airplane, which is pretty well after four or five years of owning it and pushing the envelope, and learning um there was a couple times where i'm pretty glad it hadn't quit i'm extra glad it didn't quit because i'm not sure i would have made it it would have been probably ugly so i think it's probably good to do some of that sometimes and uh see if you're accurate in your predictions on where you could or couldn't land All right, guys, before I end this video, a couple things I need to say. I'm not an instructor, and I'm definitely not telling other people to go out and actually pull the power completely off, you know, shut down the motor to do a, uh, you know, simulated engine out, because that's actually not simulated. That is an engine out. So um, definitely not pushing other people to do that. If it's something you're comfortable with, you know, fine. Make sure you got altitude. Make sure you got the field made. Um, I don't do it all the time. It's just something I do once in a while. Brings a little more realism to it, a little more intenseness. Um, I've had this thing quit twice due to vapor lock. Once was in a field uh, that I've never been before, and once was on my home runway that's pretty short. Neither were a good situation. And about 10 foot in the air, quit right after takeoff, just boom, dead, and there you go. Now, in that situation, I have time to really panic or get too worked up about it. You know, you just, it's kind of like muscle memory, you just go back into landing mode and set it down and then go, hmm. Uh, but anyway, yeah, just, just be safe out there. I think it's important to practice a lot of this stuff. Practice returning to the field. You know, know what altitude you need. Try it in different wind conditions. Um, it's good to practice, um, you know, climbing steep and slow and then pull the power off. Of course, do it up high. Work up to it slowly. Don't just point it up steep and yank the power off. This airplane's very forgiving. You can do that. You can yank the power off very slow, and there's even a time period before you have to react, uh, and it won't just stall right away, and you can just instantly push the nose over and you're flying again so it's very forgiving but not all are so it's good to know your airplane and its characteristics and its envelope i'm a big believer in that i'm no expert and again i'm not an instructor but i do think it's important to practice this stuff and just try to know that envelope the best you can all right guys take care see you on the next one